For Iron Council, two tanks are required for this encounter. In order to do hard mode, Steel Breaker needs to be the last to die. One tank should tank Brundir and Molgheim together, while the second tank, preferably a Prop Paladin, tanks Steel Breaker away from the raid. Prop Paladin is better for Steel Breaker because he can self-dispel Fusion Punch, but while doing hard mode, due to how hard Steel Breaker hits in the later phases of the encounter, having a designated dispeller if you have a stronger geared non-pala tank would be beneficial to your raid. Brundir should be the first boss to die. He casts Overload from time to time, which needs to be avoided by running away from it or using a defensive cooldown. In the efforts of getting these first two phases done quickly, staying in on the first Overload with personal cooldowns and desac from a Paladin up is a viable strategy. He also casts Chain Lightning and should be interrupted, but as you have all your DPS on this boss at the start, this should be a non-issue. Molgheim will drop a Rune of Power under one of the three bosses that will boost the damage of anyone standing in it, including the bosses themselves. For that reason, both tanks should already be strafing with their bosses when Molgheim is casting Rune of Power to avoid any unnecessary damage from a buffed boss. If you're the tank on Steelbreaker, setting Molgheim as your focus target is recommended. This way you'll see when he is casting Rune of Power. Your Molgheim tank should also keep the bosses close enough so that the melee can still DPS it while standing in the rune. He'll also cast an ability called Shield of Runes that can and should be removed by your mage with spell still, so the mage benefits from the buff. If for some reason you have no mages, you can use a Priest Dispel or a Shaman Purge. Either way, you want the buff off of Molgheim as soon as possible. Once Brundir's dead, the two other bosses will be healed to full. They will do more damage and will gain a new ability each. For this reason, there is no direct benefit from cleaving or multi-dotting in this fight, unless you're doing it to fish for procs, such as Shadow Trance for Warlocks. Steelbreaker will now cast Static Disruption on a random player at range that deals damage to anyone around him and places a debuff that will increase nature damage received. For that reason, Steelbreaker should be stacked with Molgheim and everyone in the raid except for two or three ranged DPS or healers because you'll need these to stay at range spread to bait the debuff onto them. This debuff can be casted on anyone that is not in Steelbreaker's melee range, so it's crucial that everyone in the raid stacks on Steelbreaker even though you're attacking Molgheim. Once one of the players staying out gets the debuff, he should run back to the raid, wait for the debuff to drop off, and then move back out at range again. Molgheim will still do Rune of Power under either himself or under Steelbreaker, and it should be taken advantage of for Phase 3. He will also now place a Rune of Death under a random player that deals heavy damage to everyone standing in it. For that reason, once a new Rune of Power is up, everyone should spread away from the blue rune to avoid getting a Rune of Death on top of it, and potentially wasting it. Make sure to spread away from everyone and not be in small stacks because static disruption is still dangerous, but it's okay for one person to take a stack of it. Once the Rune of Death is up, quickly move away from it and everyone goes stack back on top of the Rune of Power. Make sure again to be in melee range from Steelbreaker while DPS in Molgheim to avoid extra static disruption on everyone in melee. And once Molgheim is about to die, call for your DPS to stop completely, wait for a new Rune of Power, finish off Molgheim, and then you're ready to engage Steelbreaker. It's extremely important to transition cleanly into the Steelbreaker phase with a fresh blue rune because it's one big DPS race now. The boss's damage is now increased drastically. It's at this point you want to pop Bloodlust, use all your cooldowns, use your haste potions or destruction potions, make sure you're stood on the rune of power and burn that boss. It'll place a buff on the current main tank that will increase his damage dealt by 200% but will instantly kill the tank after 25 seconds. At this point it'll also deal massive AoE damage around that tank and the way you counter this is a couple of seconds before it expires you have your off tank taunt. Before taunt in you should absolutely be using a personal cooldown ahead of time so you don't get any instant nasty spike damage that your healers weren't ready for. On top of that, every time someone dies in this phase, Steelbreaker will heal for a considerable amount of his health, so you do not want any death outside of the tank. But it's also important to keep up a Mortal Strike effect, be it Mortal Strike itself or Aim Shot or Wound Poison, to reduce the amount of healing he is going to receive when somebody dies. Depending on the raid DPS, you may need to get your first tank rezzed extremely fast and fully buffed up, ready to take Steelbreaker again when your off tank dies. There is another way you can handle this. You could use a Hunter or any other DPS that can survive for a few seconds with Rocket Boots or a big defensive cooldown at the start of Phase 3 to taunt the boss to gain the overwhelming power buff to increase the raid DPS and greatly 
decrease the time needed to kill the boss. A couple of important things to remember is make sure to always stay on Steelbreaker's melee range throughout phase two and three to avoid anyone getting killed by static disruption. Also, a lot of damage is nature damage, so you need to be running nature resistance totem or a hunter aura. And during phase two, rune of death deals shadow damage, so using aura mastery and shadow aura when it spawns can be incredibly helpful as well. It's an incredibly challenging fight, and if you don't want the challenge and you want to kill the boss normally, my recommended strategy would be to kill Steelbreaker first, handle the runes exactly the same by spreading for runes of death and stacking back up in runes of power to kill Molgheim next, and finally, you'll have Brundir, who doesn't gain too many more abilities. He will do a lightning well that needs interrupting from phase two onwards. And in phase three, when he's the last boss, the big ability that he gains is he'll go up into the air and he'll chase a random member doing lightning damage to everybody around. So simply spread out, use a defensive cooldown if he's targeting you, and don't start running all over the place, spreading that lightning and doing unnecessary damage to the rest of the raid. Quite honestly, doing it on normal mode, you shouldn't find that challenging at all. The hardest part Part really is getting to the last phase with as many people alive as possible to make sure you can handle Brundir cleanly. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. If you want to see full written guides of any of these bosses, check out the link in the description to Warcraft Tavern. They've got every single boss on 10 and 25 man up on their site now. See you on the next one.